to continue play of Operation Visa Ribon. We are entering an interesting uh, phase. Um, we are here on the uh, fifth game turn. That's um, the end of the th second week or the third beginning of the third week of the invasion. And uh, before I go further, I just want to mention something I got a bit wrong about the national morale usage. Um, well, a couple of things. First, there's national morale track, so that's what your national morale is. That only goes up or down according to, for the Norwegians as they lose cities and to the Germans as they gain them. The um, British and French national morale will, I believe, not go up. Perhaps it does go up if they recapture um, cities on behalf of the Norwegians. Yeah, I guess that would happen. Um, so that just goes up or down depending on the cities you capture. And... Uh, the when you lose a city, you you gain its its point va you lose its point value off your national morale. And when you gain a city, you gain half of that rounded up. So most of the cities are one point. So it'd be one swing either way. Um, places like um, Bergen there are four, so that would half to two. Oslo's underneath there is um six. But then some are like um, on three. So, you know, um, uh, on the whole, the Germans will get what the Norwegians lose. So there's a bit of a swing there. Um, the other thing is, so then you track the national morale usage here. And that does not go up and down each turn. When I first started the first two turns, I think I, um, I was putting that back down to zero at the beginning of the term, it doesn't work like that. So this will track the total national morale usage over the whole game. Um, so you can see at the moment, Germany has 37 points used and they have 36 <laughs> points to use. Oh yeah, that's right. I took one of their offensive loss and I think I I remember I corrected it, so I'll put that down. So that should be there. So they've used up their whole limit. Um, but they do have some uh, offences. This is where you keep track of your offences. So, um, and again, in the rules, it doesn't... I, I didn't hadn't noticed that track at first, but then I saw it and I thought, OK, so that's how you track your offences. Now, there's nothing in the rules to say that that goes down to zero at the end of the, your turn. So you could say buy 10 offensives in one turn and only use two of them and then say something for the next turn. You might want to do that if you really need initiative on a turn, but you don't necessarily have a lot of attacks to make. So that's, that's not explicit, but implicit in the rules. And it, it works very well like that, I believe. So... That's why I'm playing it. So the Germans, um, unless they've got five more offences they can take, um, unless they take more cities. So if they don't take any more cities and they've they've made five offences, um, that's it. It's essentially game over for them because um, they just won't be able to make any more offences. Um, so we're at an interesting point. The um, British and French have now started... Um, buying offences so they bought one there and the Norwegians they've been buying some but they haven't bought any at the moment because they're in a difficult position they've lost their national morale has gone down it was 50 at the start it's gone down to 45 and um they've spent 40 oh again I got that oh, 46 um well I'll let them off that um Oh, actually, yeah, maybe it's because now, yeah, okay, that's fine because what happens is um the Germans actually lost some cities, so so that might be bigger than that. What you spent might be bigger than your actual national morale because that could decrease um you know in a finite way. So the Germans actually uh had um they taken was it here. Oh yeah, no, that's right, it was here, they would taken this, and their four points, their force got destroyed, it got taken back from them. Um, so I'll show you the situation on the board, essentially um, in the first two turns, the uh, German units that had invaded here from, from Group 1 were wiped out, and um, so these are sitting pretty, this guy didn't go over to the Quislings. Um, and in fact, that leader, he's he's come all the way down here now. He's 
starting to assist in the defence. Um, the Norwegian ships have gathered together and gone into port because if you have ships at sea at the end of a turn, you lose a national morale point for every five ships you have at sea. So you've got to stick them in port at some point. And that essentially happened in the last couple of turns. The ships were getting back to port. You know, the Germans had done their invasion. invasion. They were essentially trying to escape the Brits. Um, uh, so um, we've got a, a large force of British um, naval here. Um, so they'd gone into Trondheim to um, save that national morale usage. Um, Norwegians have some bombers here. And they're guarding the straits there with a su depleted submarine. Then their main effort is now all hit here. <coughs> they've got some fellows here. And they've got some fellows here um, near Stranger, Stavanger, sorry, which is also the point of the first um, uh, reinforcements coming in. So under here is the 24th Guards. Um, British unit that have come in and uh, bolstering the defence. The British have got now, um, they've just got reinforcements. Um, so, you know, they've got, got these forces, some French and some British, that they can bring on to the land. I think that's five or six units there, five or six regiments, that is. Um, so they've got submarines protecting out at sea to protect the... Um, uh, transports there and all of these units are scattered um, but they're actually sitting on there it'd be quite handy really in this game to have some task force um, counters and you know have task forces off the sheet because you do get big stacks of naval units it tends to happen in naval games um, but um, what happened there there was a there was a bit of a standoff. I think it, they sunk a British submarine or something like that and the rest of the Brit Navy from there went back um, to Blighty and those ones dived into port because the Brits are in a critical situation these are all the permanent losses so these are all capital ships and you see two leaders on the um, Norwegian side their best leader Rouge three points worth is gone but the, the Germans have lost two leaders as well one very good leader there um, so all these ships never get can be regenerated and the British can only lose uh, I can't remember, is it six ships? They've lost one, two, three, four. So named ships, I think, yeah, if they lose five named ships, they can only ever draw the game. So if they lose one more named ship, the destroyer groups don't count. Um, the, the Germans are guaranteed a draw. So the Brits are going to have to tread very carefully now because um, in the naval combat, if you remember, um, although generally the defender chooses... Um, where they take the hits. If the attacker rolls a 1 on the d10, they can choose where to take the hit. So you only need to roll two ones in any combat, and then you can target both of them on one capital ship and sink it. That had essentially been what's happening. Because um, obviously when you get big stacks, you do get a lot of rolls, although often, you know, with depletions and so forth, you're only rolling a 1 or a 2, getting a hit on a 1 or 2. But the Germans did have an admiral, which the British don't, interestingly enough. He adds to the roles. So um, the Brits are sort of run to ground, but they were able, because these units had already moved in that turn, they weren't able to um, intercept or put um, the transport. So the Brits are going to be doing that. Essentially, they're going to be running convoys quickly back and forth. Um, as much as they can. So really the Germans want to to get all the ports at this end of Norway um, so that the Brits then have to come all the way along here to help the Norwegian effort and then the Germans can patrol here with the submarines and so forth. Submarines get one like free hit in, they can sort of essentially give a hit and then try and evade before they can get hit back. Um, but as you saw, the Germans lost one sub. So the Germans, um, they have no units beyond here. Um, they did um, fly in a couple of paratrooper units to try and 
to block the rail lines here because you can move unlimited on rail lines to try and stem the Norwegian reinforcement around here but the Nor Norwegians have moved back Oslo was taken but um you can see that that the Norwegians they did I wouldn't say they have the Germans hemmed in because the Germans do have quite strong forces there they, they've got um a few units in those stacks the Norwegians have got quite a few too um and the Norwegian units are better on defense than attack um, which is generally the same with all units except, well, it is the same with all units except for the artillery. So this is the interesting situation. i got control markers here. These never went to German control, but just to remind me that they're still in Norwegian control. So the Germans just have these. They also have that one there. I do need to mark that because I can remember that. They don't have moss. They're going to have to quickly whiz over and get some more points, as we noted. But um, yeah, interesting, interesting days. Um, so you can see it's very early yet in the whole campaign. Um, coming up towards the end of April, we've still got May and June to play. Um, but uh, there's been quite a few losses. These ones are ones that can be um, um, regenerated. And that's one that c comes in as reinforcements. You see the reinforcements here, they come in at the end of the turn, they go in your placement box, and then the next turn um, you get to um, stick them out on the board. So that's the uh, overall situation. Um, I'll just give you a quick look at the formidable German. Um, they've got all of these units lined up, they can come in on those Junkers 52 transports. Oh, yeah, but that's the important thing, yeah, they've got this airfield. They had an airfield there and they're desperately fighting for it. That was part of the reason they're thinking maybe we can paratroop some troopers there, but they lost it. Forces there were wiped out. Um, they need that airfield because they can only stage six planes on that on an airfield at a time. And uh, these ones don't have the range. Um, at the moment they've got um, they've got these Heinkel um, bombers on that airfield because they've been using those to bomb the. Uh, British um, fleets. Now the British fleets are off the map in the main. They're probably going to be used to start bombing um, supporting attacks, bombing other units. Um, but you can see that you know they've got a quandary because they, they've been needing these against the British fleets but they also need to get some units on board. So these ones could only get about this far before those um, the transport junkers have to fly back. So they really need that airport there's also another airport here which they're fighting for. Um, and I think that's the only three on the map. Uh, so, problems, problems for the Germans. Um, I think I'm feeling it's it's not going well for the Germans um, because they've taken quite a few losses and um, they're not in an advanced position. But it is very early days, and like the last turn only took me five minutes because there, I think there was no combat, and everyone was maybe just a bit of a sub a fleet combat. But everyone was kind of like moving around, positioning themselves because um, uh, not having offensives, people weren't attacking, and the Germans was wanting to save their offensives. So I think we're going to have lots of moves that will have no actual offensives, but you know, transportation. Um, rearrangement of flights and things like that so it's very interesting and in, is that operational strategic I don't know what the, 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 the received nomenclature is but it's very interesting that um, you've got kind of three you know you've, you, you've got three sets of forces you've got the, the air the sea and the land and it's very interesting um, arranging those in the correct um, quantities and, and, and qualities that you want or, or correct quantities and positions that you want within this game so um, yeah I'm, I'm really like it it plays fast and it's got int many interesting decisions but not too many you know to, that make it a sort of complicated brain burner although I think I should have um, thought more carefully for the Germans, but it's usual with a game when I started, I sort of crash and bash to um, just try and learn the system 
But then, of course, I hardly ever get to play a second game immediately because I go on to another many games that I have to play. And uh, it may be sometime before I come back to this one, having sort of learnt something about maybe how the Germans should um, should play out. I don't know. I'll see if I can digest it and come up with something sensible to speak about later. But anyway, um, I will come back after some more turns um, when some mentionables happen.